Hi everyone and welcome back to Mikefish for a care guide on pearl gouramis. In this video, I will cover everything you need to ensure your pearl gouramis live their best lives. From characteristics, to diet, and then to breeding. You can decide whether or not the pearl gourami is right for you. Now let's get started. Pearl gouramis, known scientifically as Trichopodus lirai, also go by mosaic gourami, lace gourami, diamond gourami, and liri gourami. They originated in Southeast Asia, in Thailand, Malaysia, Borneo, and Sumatra. Due to human intervention and introduced populations, they can now be found living in Singapore and Colombia as well. Pearl gourami have an elongated, thin, flat and tall, silvery body, with a mosaic pattern of black spots, and two long, skinny ventral fins, also called feelers used as sensors. A dark line, which also varies in darkness, runs from their snout, through their eyes, to the caudal peduncle where it ends on a spot. Their bodies also have a pearl, brown and blue coloration to it, with an orange coloration on the ventral head that gets brighter during breeding season to attract a mate. They also have little white dots that stretch all over most of their bodies, including their fins. These pearl-like dots create an interesting visual, almost glittering when they're swimming. Like other gouramis, the mouth is small and upturned, and they also have a labyrinth organ that they use to breathe. It pretty much functions like a lung, so they will need to visit the surface periodically to get air. They like to hang out in the upper half of the water column, so keep this in mind when adding floating plants to their aquarium. You don't want to block their path to fresh air. Pearl gouramis are generally easy to care for. They reach a maximum length of 4.5 inches, and can live to about four to five years, sometimes up to eight with optimum care. They are a peaceful species and do well in community tanks, but just avoid putting them with aggressive tank mates. Even large tank mates that are peaceful could potentially stress out the pearl gourami and cause them to hide. Since they head up to the surface often to breathe, they might be too scared and stressed to do so. Some examples of possible tank mates are neon tetras, dwarf gourami, corridoras, coolie loaches, danios, cherry barbs, and plecos. Pearl gouramis prefer to be in a shoaling group than on their own. If you are planning a species-only tank, the males become aggressive to each other and even toward other gouramis. Therefore, it is best to keep a couple females for every single male in the aquarium. They prefer acidic water, similar to the lowland swamps, low rivers, stagnant tributaries and lakes they come from, but adaptable to other conditions. Their aquarium should be at least 20 gallons, preferably 35 gallons, with plenty of plants, some floating plants, driftwood, rocks, subdued lighting, and a dark substrate. The water flow should be slow with a temperature between 77 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit, or 25 to 28 degrees Celsius, with a pH between 5.5 and 7.5, and a degree general hardness of 2 to 30. However, I don't recommend chasing pH. It's a waste of time and money, and most fish are already adapted to most tap water. Too much fluctuation can stress them out even more than keeping a consistent pH a bit out of the range in their native habitat. In their natural habitat, pearl gouramis will snack on insects and other protein-rich foods like eggs and algae. They are considered omnivores and may also nibble on plants and vegetable matter. In the aquarium, they are easy to feed and accept a wide variety of foods such as flakes, freeze-dried foods, frozen foods, pellets, bloodworms, blackworms, brine shrimp, and glassworms. Providing variety is optimal for their health, and you can achieve this through occasional feedings of fresh vegetables, lettuce, cooked peas, and spinach. Pearl gourami are dimorphic, meaning that the gender differences in pearl gourami are easily distinguishable. Males are larger, thinner, and have a more angular body, and generally more coloration. Males will also display a deep red-orange coloration on the throat breast, as well as a longer and pointier dorsal fin. When ready to spawn, females will have a plumper body. Breeding pearl gouramis is pretty simple. They are a bubble nest builder and should be provided with some floating plants and gentle filtration. Raise the temperature to 80 degrees Fahrenheit and feed the breeding pair live or frozen brine shrimp to condition breeding. The male will build a bubble nest at the surface that can reach up to 10 inches in diameter within the floating plants. After the nest is complete, the male will begin to display it to the female. And as the female approaches the nest, both fish can be seen touching each other with their feelers. During spawning, the male wraps his body around the female, who will release hundreds of eggs. 
the eggs will float upwards into the nest, with the male gathering any strays by putting them into the bubble nest using his mouth. Several more spawning locks can occur, and 200 to 300 eggs can be produced. After the eggs have been laid, the female is chased away. It is best to remove her from the breeding tank at this point, or she can be harmed by the male. The male will guard the eggs that can hatch in about one to three days, and the fry will be free swimming in another four to five days. At this point, the male can be removed, so he doesn't mistaken the fry for food. During this entire process, the water level should be lowered to about six inches. This will give the fry easy access to the surface air to promote normal development of the labyrinth organ. Feed the fry infusoria or liquid food once the yolk sac is absorbed and move on to baby brine shrimp at about two weeks. Finely ground flake food can also be offered at about a month old. Perform water changes every two to three days as most fry loss and poor growth is often due to excessive waste and poor water conditions. Finally, Pearl gurami fry grow very slowly, and care must be given when doing water changes as they are very susceptible to changes in water temperature for about three months. I hope some knowledge was gained throughout this care guide, and I hope it helped with your decision of whether or not the pearl gurami is the right fish for you. These are a peaceful fish, with an interesting coloration that would be great for anyone that has been in the hobby for a year. Please hit the like button if you took away at least one point from the video, it helps the video and channel tremendously. I cannot thank you enough for even watching this, so thank you, and I hope to see you in the next video.